while shooting the last video, upgrading the big brakes on the 240SX, I noticed the ball joints on the lower control arms were a little bit loose. So I called up some good friends over at the Godspeed Project and ordered some lower control arms. However, those guys one-upped me and sent me everything that they make for their suspension system. So thanks for that guys, I really appreciate it. The parts on the car that are already on there are worn, so this is a great upgrade for me. If you're an avid track enthusiast, you'll know that having adjustable suspension geometry is key to setting up a car just right. That's why it makes sense to install adjustable arms such as Godspeeds because they offer full camber, caster, tow, and track width adjustments. Not only that though, all of these components use spherical type bushings which get rid of any play in the suspension, offering more predictable and consistent handling. Exactly what we want in a track car. About the only downside to these arms is the increased road noise from the spherical bearings and a higher wear rate if you drive your car every day. As for installation, this is a job even the most novice mechanic can handle. Up front, you'll need to disconnect the sway bar and tension rod arm. Then crack the ball joint loose. and then the lower control arm slides right out. So here's a quick tip before installing the aftermarket lower control arm, what you wanna do is measure the stock one and compare it to the aftermarket one here and then you can adjust it accordingly. Same with this, you just measure it and then obviously this one's way shorter so I'll have to make some adjustments here before you install it that way gonna need to have an alignment done regardless but at least you'll be in somewhat with spec. Reverse the removal steps to install Godspeed's adjustable front control arm. Remember though don't over tighten the crown nut on the ball joint otherwise you're gonna strip the thread. The old outer tie rod required a ball joint separator since it was on there real tight. This nifty tool works wonders and can be bought super cheap at Harbor Freight. Here's another advantage to using the Godspeed suspension pieces like this outer tie rod. Here's the factory one. In comparison you can see that the Godspeed one's much taller which is going to help us fix bump steer. If you don't know what bump steer is, look it up, but it's not a good thing. So we want to have it as close to OE geometry as possible and this is going to help it. Mission accomplished on the front suspension. Let's get cracking on the rear. The drive axle needs to be removed from the hub to access the ball joint, so remove the nut holding it in place. Then disconnect all the suspension arms. Pop the drive axle out and use the ball joint separator to free the hub from the lower control arm. Once you remove the two bolts and sway bar nut, the lower control arm should come right out. Just look at that beefy Godspeed lower control arm. Mmm, -mm, good. Using a heim joint here is going to stiffen the rear end up quite a bit and fix any bump steer issues the car experienced from being lowered. By now, I'm sure you're well versed in installing these parts, so instead of showing more install steps, here's some beauty shots. Alright, so that wraps up this episode. Suspension bits are all installed. Got to get an alignment, but that's not going to happen until the springtime. However, there's still a lot left to do on Project Grip S14, but that's for another episode. I'm out of here.